I came to Saudi Arabia in 2020. At first, it was exciting, or maybe so I thought, until I found myself in the countryside of Saudi Arabia and it was no more fun. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be talking about what you should expect as a dependent or as an expatriate looking to move to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This video is about giving you tips and tricks on how to survive in abroad. <laughs> the abroad life is not an easy life, especially if you're coming to Saudi Arabia because something about Saudi that makes it totally different from other countries that you might be used to is that Saudi is a country that has a different culture so the culture is totally different from what is obtainable in other places so if you're looking to come to the kingdom of saudi arabia this video i mean this very video is for you i'm making this video to actually share with you how i've managed to cope in my three years of living in saudi arabia and this is why i decided to make this video to give someone out there looking for clarity as to what to expect when you come into the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So if this video is what you're interested in watching, please kindly keep watching, like, comment, share, so that anybody that is looking to come to Saudi Arabia would, you know, be better informed from watching this video. So I'm sharing this video from the perspective of someone that has been here for three years. Yes, three good years. <laughs> First and foremost, there are some expectations given the fact that you're leaving your home country to come to a place where the culture is totally different, their way of life is totally different from yours. There is a very big contrast, you know, compared to what we have, what, what is obtainable back home. First and foremost, I will tell anybody that is looking to come to Saudi Arabia that the first thing that you need to do that would help the acculturation is to embrace the culture of the people or at least find a way to understand it you know make integrate integrate into the way of life of the people that's the first step to adaptation and when you're able to integrate trust me you have no problem let's get to the first point the first thing you have to note is that they don't speak english the official language here is arabic now for you to communicate well and communicate easily for ease of communication rather you have to first of all understand the language that is the thing that you have to first of all have in mind it's very necessary that you know that you have to know the language of the people because if you can't speak the language you find it difficult to communicate and some of them not all of them some of them do not know how to speak English. Why there are some that have a very good command of English language. By all means, begin to, you know, learn the language. It goes a long way. It will help you. I repeat, I repeat, it will help you. Then number two, I wouldn't want you to, you know, base your thoughts or perhaps you have the expectation that you're coming to probably Riyadh. Is it going to be Jeddah? Is it going to be Akoba? Guys, calm down. Let me tell you, let me bust your bubble. Because the, the possibility of you finding yourself in the not so big city is here. Very high, you guys. It's very, very high <laughs> that you will likely find yourself in the countryside of Saudi Arabia. Not everybody is lucky to find themselves in the big cities. So you have to have an open mind and know that you might find yourself in the countryside of Saudi Arabia. That is where I found myself. It doesn't have the hustling and bustling life of a city you know when you're coming when you're coming to saudi first of all land either in riyadh or jeddah and when you get there you think that oh this is how life is you know the excitement and the air you see beautiful buildings you see beautiful things you see excited people happy people you see so many interesting things that trickles your fancy and you think that is how it is it is not like that <laughs> it is not like that when you now find yourself in the countryside you begin to understand that this life there are different sides of life <laughs> and you know what makes up a countryside it's a serene environment you know there are no much people there are no activities in the countryside. It's just a small community of peace, of, of persons living a quiet life. And trust me, if you're not a quiet person, it's going to be hard for you. If you don't like quiet, calm environment, it's going to be hard for you. Even the quiet people that I know do not like it here. But what happens? You have to make do. You have to find a way. So you have to cope. And how do you cope, my brethren? 
by watching this video. So just have in mind that you're coming to a place where there's a possibility that you don't find yourself in the big cities. Number three, there's no international school in the countryside, you know, except in the city. Like for me, the region where we are posted to, they posted us to the countryside of that particular region. And the distance from that particular city to the countryside is two hours, two hours drive. So imagine that I have a child that I want to register in a school. Probably you came in with your kids, probably they are of school age, and you want to register them because the schools here are in Arabic, but international schools are for foreigners, for expatriates. How do I navigate from the countryside to the city every day, going to, to and fro, four hours, going and coming back to two hours, that's four hours. How do you want to navigate that? Another question that comes to mind. This is why you have to prepare your mind on all fronts, knowing that the possibility that I may be in a place where there is no international school, but then does it mean your kids won't go to school? How did people here get by? Most of them registered their, their kids' schools online. They homeschool their kids. But if you're lucky and you are posted to the city where the international school is itself, lucky you. But then, if you do not find yourself in such a place, what do you do? You find a way. And what is the way? It's either you homeschool your child or you register your child for online school or you tow the distance to and fro every day if you can. Up to you. And if you're an expatriate, you're the man that got the job, your wife is automatically your dependent. Or if you're coming in as a woman that got the job, your husband is automatically your dependent. And the visa rates are not permitted to work. But then, even you as a dependent, with that not allowed to work, you can actually work. But how do you do that? If you're opportuned to find a job, what you now have to do if you decide to get a job is that you have to transfer your sponsorship to your company. In essence, what it means is that you have to get a work visa. The company that is employing you has to give you a work visa. You have to go back to your home country and get like the company will have, have to issue you a work visa. So if you do not want to go through the process of you know applying for work visa and all that, you know you can actually do um, something called working remotely there are so many jobs that you can do online there's an online school where you can actually teach people and there's some people here that are actually interested in teaching their kids english there are some persons that they pay you to teach their kids english language and then another thing is that if you have a skill as a dependent and you find yourself here do you know that you can actually get value with that skill you can offer render services to people and you get paid for that in exchange. Because ordinarily, when you go to the salon to make hair, especially if the person that is making your hair is not even, they're not even Nigerians. The first time I tried it, I wept. <laughs> I wept because it was so expensive. Guys, when I say expensive, I mean it was extremely expensive. So, but there are people that are here that, you know, if you have the skill and you're very good at, you know, let's say braiding, making hair, you can actually render those services and get paid for it. There is someone I know that does it. That's what she does. She's very good. She's a very good stylist. And that's how we get by. <laughs> Number four. The thing is, um, you know that this country is a Muslim country. So if you're a Christian, nobody's stopping you from practicing your religion. We are Christians. I practice my religion. But you do it within the confines of your home. You don't bring it outside. And where I stay, I haven't seen a church. There is no church. But yeah, I believe that there might be churches. In like the big cities like Riyadh or Jeddah, where they have like you know even Abha, where they have like more expatriates because there are many foreigners. There are British people, there are Americans, there are different people, um, different people from different cultures. So I strongly believe that uh, there must be churches there for them. There must be churches in like all those uh, their embassies. They sh they should have churches. But where I stay, don't expect that you're coming in to see a church. There is no church here. There is no church here. The church that we do is in my house. I worship and I follow online for church services. So that's how I do it. <laughs> then another point to note is that the women actually wear an abaya. That's the black dress. And the men wear the white. That's the tobe. Now, one thing you would know, truthfully, it's not compulsory for expatriates to wear an abaya. 
Yes. In fact, they've, they've there are so many laws that have been relaxed for expatriate. But, <laughs> like I said, there are some places you find yourself in, like the countryside. The people there are still very conservative. You can't go out without even covering your hair. Trust me. I'm telling you for a fact. You know what, they, what it means to be, you know, people killing you with their eyes. <laughs> that is the kind of thing that is obtainable. Because the kind of eyes they will give to you. Who is this person? What are, where are you coming from? Why I like that? You know that kind of a thing. So it's best to respect. It, it, you're in a people's land. For me, I, I'm, I'm actually a big, very big advocate of, you know, respect people's so When I go out, I make sure I'm well kitted. But if I, if I leave the countryside, I don't even bother wearing the, the scarf or the abaya. If I'm leaving the countryside and I don't know where to I want to wear the abaya, yes, I know that I can't be questioned because, of course, I am free. I'm, I'm in a big city where people do not mind so much. So if I decide to now wear it even in those big cities, just because out of my own choice, out of my own volition, not because I was forced or because it was imposed on me, no. If you find yourself in the big city, lucky you, you are most blessed. But why I'm also making this, I'm trying to strike a balance here. For both people finding that will find themselves in the big city and those that will find themselves in the not so big cities so you know what's obtainable this is why i'm trying to make this video so let's, let's have like a balance <laughs> so another thing you should know is that if you're the kind of person that does things uh that has to outsource for things you know when you need to get something done you get somebody to do it for you probably you have a help if you're coming in here and you're like a mother with kids and you're coming in here without any help just know that there is no help because getting the help here is not easy i wouldn't even lie to you so if you're coming here and you think you have one more room for probably a help and you're someone that needs help with a lot of things i would advise that the best thing you do is that you actually get the help things are not easily outsourced for here you have to do everything yourself if you're someone that loves to outsource it's not going to be so easy but even if you happen to now find it's your money you have to pay for that service and another thing that you will know is that it is lonely like i said you find yourself in the countryside of saudi arabia there is no much thing to do there it's not fun truthfully i won't lie to you when we talk about the rural area it's not that of course there is light there is light 24 7 you enjoy light there, there are good roads there are mini malls where you can buy things you want to buy but there is this excitement that comes with living in a bubbly city, in a very busy city, you know. Every minute you can hear the whole cars honking, you hear the sick amount, you see the busy road cars everywhere, people everywhere, you go to the malls, you see people filled there, everywhere is filled out, everywhere is people doing activities, you see people, different people from different cultural backgrounds. But in the South countryside, it's not like that. It's not fun. I've heard most persons say that they came in here and they couldn't cope. They had to leave. They left. So people come in with their families and their family, their dependent wives or husbands couldn't cope because of where they found themselves in. And, and they left. And I don't even blame That's them. why it's important that when you get to whatever, wherever they post you, they actually have a good rapport with the Nigerian community. For me, I would say I got by very well because of the Nigerian community, a very active night. In fact, it was just God that just put them here for me. I didn't know what God was doing for us until we came here and we met people who we are loving, who we are kind. And I pray that if you find yourself in the countryside, that you find yourself surrounded by such people. If you come in here as a single person, probably you're just a, a, a woman that came in here as an expert. You didn't come in with your family. And you find yourself again in the countryside, not even only the countryside. I think most places here in Saudi Arabia, if you come in and they, as a single woman, you they give you that they, they actually have like an accommodation for a single person where you stay within the hospital premises or they have like a house where they build for for single ladies because they don't expect that you go out and look for a house outside of the premises like for single nurses that i know here they they, they they don't live outside the hospital they live within the hospital they make provision for them within the hospital where they actually live for any reason they have to like do shopping there and they have a day one well, i think once a month where the buses carry them to go shopping where they like do whatever they want to do and they bring them back and i think somehow it is still for those living in the countryside you find yourself being limited because you're not allowed to like roam around especially when you're a single person a single female but in the big cities i know that they also give them accommodation but i think for those big cities they are generally free to like go and go about their daily lives but they give them accommodation where they all live but of course you're free to like roam around and do your thing I, I suppose, because I've seen some persons that actually have that liberty. 
I've tend to build a rewarding life around the boring situation I find myself in. And I've, I, I, I've started to like, you know, catch a breath and do the things that I love. You know, there, there, there are a plethora of things to do. If you actually look inwardly, there are so many things that can actually get yourself involved, especially if you're not legally working or officially working. This is for those who are dependent. So my tips on how I coped in the countryside of Saudi Arabia. Number one, I said doing things I loved doing. You know, I'm someone that likes to do things. I love to, I am very big on, you know, trying out stuff. Wherever it is, online, offline, outside, inside, I am just that person. And one good thing that being here actually helped me do is to start a YouTube channel. I, I didn't even know that I could do this. I never even thought about it in my life. Never. But coming here actually opened me up to the opportunity, to the realization of the opportunity that I could actually assess. And it's, it's, it's been wonderful so far, I won't even lie. Even though that being here somehow is set the trajectory of my life a little bit. But then it also helped me achieve a lot because the period of three years that I've been here, there's a lot that has been achieved. So my advice to you is that if you're coming here and you don't find yourself in the bubbly cities, you find yourself in a very quiet town, make the most out of it. Then number two is that we made traveling a routine we start traveling Saudi Arabia. If you go through my channel, most of the videos I have, contents I have about places I've been to in Saudi Arabia. And that was it for me. That was the best moment of my life. Since living in Saudi, the most exciting part about <laughs> living here is whenever I get to travel outside this town. You know, leave this town, go to other places, explore. And I have been exploring and I have been loving it. So once in a while, you like take out time from a busy schedule and like just move around and see the town for yourself, see the city for yourself, then see the country for yourself. The country is a very beautiful place. And this is how you can get back. Feel free to go through my channel because I have so many, when I say so many exciting content about how I have fully explored the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, or partially, not fully, but I have to an extent explored most some cities here in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So another thing is, like I said, I mentioned earlier, having a vibrant Nigerian community. For us, we Nigerians here, we are like family. You know, we, we, we tend to have gatherings, we tend to have gatherings, we gather, we have like events, celebrate birthdays together, celebrate Christmas periods together, you know, sometimes we even travel together. So we actually gather a lot, we visit each other, you know, we talk about things we experience, we have fun, we eat together, we party together and, you know, the days keeps going, the years keeps going. I've been here for three years, I coped. <laughs> I don't know how I did it, but I keep saying, aside from every uh, coping mechanism I had to come up with, it was just God's grace. See, there is nothing that we do without the grace of God. So to top it all off, let the grace of God be with you to help you to cope. <laughs> so by watching this video, everything is put into perspective and this will actually help you prepare your mind for moving here. So you guys, I think I have talked too much. <laughs> So, but if there is something else that I did not point out, I think or there might be a sequel of this video so that I can, you know, point out the remaining points. But for now, I have to end this video because this video is looking very long. I don't want it to be so long. Because I do not want it to be so long, I have to end it here. So with these few points of mine, I hope I've been able to convince you <laughs> and not convince you that anywhere in the world at all is livable. What matters is how you make it livable for you what you do and how you do it to make it livable for you thank you very much guys for watching this if video you watched up to this point please give my video a thumbs up if you're yet to subscribe please kindly subscribe to my channel and if you enjoyed please kindly give my video a thumbs up and i will see you see you all in my next one okay bye